Hey what's up guys, this is Patrick Kura, your prof next door, and for today's video, we'll be discussing receivable management. Okay, so our topic for today is receivable management. So ano ba ang accounts receivable? Ang ibig sabihin po ng receivable is what? With fixed determinable payment, okay? So in an active market. Receivable management involves amounts and terms of credit to extend to customers and monitoring of receivables. So ang pag-uusapan natin is gaano ba kalaki yung um, i-offer mo as uh, pautang sa iyong customers, ano ba yung terms of credit ninyo, no? kung ilang days ba yung pautang, sino ba yung bibigyan ng pautang, and paano mo mamomonitor itong mga pautang na to para makolekta mo sila at hindi sila mag-result into bad debt. So, yun yung focus ng ating discussion. So, what is the objectives of receivable management? It is to collect accounts receivable as quickly as possible without losing sales from high-pressure collection techniques. As uh, we have discussed in general working capital management, pag nagbe-business ka, gusto mo agad mong makolekta yung pautang mo. Siyempre, ayaw mo naman na makulong yung pera mo diba? sa yung mga customers. However, remember, do not uh, use high pressure collection techniques yung makukulitan sila kasi in the future baka hindi na sila bumili sa iyo so you will have lost sales kapag ganun may opportunity cost so what are the factors to consider in formulating your accounts receivable policy first on the list is credit standard sa credit standard pag-uusapan natin yung 5 Cs of credit okay Next, we will discuss the credit terms. Ano ba yung credit period na you offer mo and ano ba yung discount? Magkano yung discount na ibibigay mo? An example of that one is ito pong 210 and 30, no? Na nakagis na natin nung nasa first year uh, college pa lang tayo. And third is we will uh, discuss the collection program of the company or the credit monitoring. How effective and efficient your billing system is? And how are you going to manage risk by minimizing the cost and maximizing ROI or your return on investment? So remember, pagdating sa discussion natin, do not forget the benefit cost analysis. Dapat mas malaki yung ma marireceive mong benefits compared dun sa gagastusin mo kapag nag-implement ka ng isang system or isang uh, process sa iyong company. So these are the five C's of credit. What are these five C's? We have character capacity, collateral, capital, and condition. So, umpisa natin sa character. Sabi dito, it determines by your credit score and credit history. So, ang focus ng character mo is your willingness to pay. So, makikita mo yan kapag uh, uh, mangungutang ka, no? titignan yan ng uh, mga suppliers kung ikaw ba ay nakakabayad on time, ikaw ba ay reliable when it comes to payment and hindi ka ba uh, nagkaka-incur ng penalty or hindi mo tinatakasan yung mga pinagkautangan mo. So papasok yan sa character. Next on the list is capacity. That is based on your income and other financial obligations, will you be able to pay back the loan? So, sa capacity, pag-uusapan naman yung ability to generate cash flows. Saan ba manggagaling yung pera mo? So, uh, paano mo mababayaran yung utangan mo? Siyempre, tingnan mo na yung source of income mo. So, dyan yan sa capacity. Third, we have collateral. Do you have savings or assets that can be claimed if you don't make your payments? So, ito, papasok yung... Uh, guarantee no or uh, assurance yung tawag nating surety ship diyan siya sa collateral papasok so some companies um would like to secure the debt by having you pledge your property either in real property or personal property so depende yan sa terms ninyo nung um, pag-utangan mo fourth we have capital do you have savings or assets that can be claimed if you don't make your payments so sa capital papasok yung net worth mo so remember um 
even if you don't have a business, kunyari mangungutang ka personally, you should have what we call the SALN, di ba? Naririnig natin palagi yan kapag ikaw ay nagtatrabaho sa government. SALN stands for Statement of Assets, Liabilities, and Net Worth. And that is the document that they will uh, uh, analyze or examine para makita nila yung capital mo no, dito sa part na to. And lastly, we have condition. How do you intend to use the money? So, pagdating doon, titignan nila yung current economic and business conditions ng isang kumpanya o ng isang tao. Next, let's proceed to the credit terms. So, sa credit terms, discuss natin yung types of discount. Basically, there are two types of discount. No? So, we have a trade discount, the purpose of which is to encourage bulk sales, yung pakyawan, yung bibili ka ng madami. So, say for example, if ikaw ay isang sari-sari store at gusto mong uh, bumili ng mga stocks, huwag kang bibili grocery kasi may patong na yon para makamura ka at makabili ka ng madami bumili ka mismo dun sa factory ng chicheria so doon makikita mo na yung trade discount is like this it can be 2 or 3 percentages na magkakasunod so kunwari yan 20% 10% that's an example of a trade discount and remember that trade discount is not recorded in the books next we have cash discount cash discount is uh, known as purchase discount on the part of the buyer and sales discount on the part of the seller. It encourages prompt payment para agad kang magbayad ng utang mo. So, paano malalaman na cash discount yung in-offer? Ito yung merong 2, 10, and 30. Ano pong ibig sabihin yan? If you paid within 10 days, you will receive 2% discount. And if you paid within 30 days, you will receive no discount or net of discount. Now, what is the purpose of putting N30? Alam naman natin na kapag lumagpas ng 10 days, eh, wala ka ng discount. The purpose of putting this N30 sa iyong terms is para kapag lumagpas ng 30 days yung iyong pautang, eh, pwedeng mag-charge ng penalty or fees yung nagpautang kasi you did not follow your agreement when it comes to your credit terms. Now, may ibang mga uh, linalagay silang terms like 2 slash EOM. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? If you paid within end of month, you will receive 2%. That's the meaning of that. Paano naman kung ganito? 2 slash 2 slash EOM. The meaning of that is if I paid 2 days after end of month, I will still get 2% discount. And cash discount is recorded in the books. Remember, there are two methods in recording cash discount. It can be the net method or the gross method. Pero yung fina-follow natin dapat is the what? The net method. Yun nga lang, mas convenient yung pag-record kapag gross method. Okay? So, depende pa din po yan sa company policy if anong susundin nila sa recording ng cash discount. Next, so, we will discuss receivable portfolio analysis. So, paano po ba to? Remember guys, hindi lang naman isa yung pinapautangan ng kumpanya when it comes to their goods, di ba? Madaming mga customers ang mag avail ng iyong uh, credit terms. And one of the things in order for you to monitor your uh, receivables is using the aging of accounts. Paano po itong aging of accounts na to? Dito mo makikita kung ano ba yung mga past due, yung mga um, hindi pa nagmamature, and ano yung mga hahabulin mo na mga uh, customers na matagal nang hindi nagbabayad sa'yo. So, it is a tracking down receivables which are moving and not. So, how to get your average accounts receivable? There's a simple formula for this one which is credit sales divided by 360 days multiplied by the average collection period. That's how you get your average AR. Now, magtataka siguro kayo bakit po 360 days yung ginamit ko? Bakit hindi 365? Bakit hindi 366? Uniformity should be used when it comes to the computation of any receivable. So in here, the assumption is there are 30 days in one month. So 30 days times 12 months, we have uh, 360 days. So yun po yung uh, pinafollow ko palagi in computing average AR. And I think uh, most of the books um, agree with me in using 360 days. Now, what are the collection policy or system being used in the company na masasabi nating efficient siya? When it is, what? Number one, mabilis ka makakulekta. Okay, faster collection. Number two, there is a higher turnover in receivables. When it comes to turnover, this is... Uh, 
it means that your receivables are being collected on time. They are not uh, delayed. Uh, they are not past due. So that's the meaning of higher turnover. And number three, there's a shorter collection period. Of course, uh, sino ba namang kumpanya ang gustong mahaba ang period before nakakakolekta? Sabihin natin, yes, uh, your receivables are being collected on time. But then again, yung time pala na yun is more than three months. And it will burden your company if ganun ka uh, extensive or ka uh, long yung time ng iyong collection period. So, dapat shorter collection period and faster collection with higher turnover in receivables. Now, what are the scenarios when it comes to receivable management na nagko-compute tayo? Number one is change in discount policy. Paano kung magpalit ng discount uh, percentage yung ating pong kumpanya? Sabi natin dati 5%, ngayon gagawin ng 10%. So, biglang lumaki yung discount. Or, dati, walang discount, ngayon mag-offer na ng discount. So, those are scenarios under this change in discount policy. Two, Credit relaxation policy. Pag sabing credit relaxation, from the word relaxation, okay, uh, parang binigyan ng leeway yung uh, mga customers na magbayad ng mas matagal. So, kung dati ang credit uh, collection period mo is only 30 days, ngayon ginawa mong 60 days, no? So, remember, kapag pinahaba mo yung credit period, madaming mga clients ang mag avail niyan. So, lalaki yung sales. Yun nga lang, ano ba yung magiging effect niyan sa company? So, pag-aaralan natin yan dito sa receivable manager. Now, what is the computation in your change in discount policy? This is the format that we will follow. So, first is yung old uh, computation of your uh, average AR. So, kanina, na-discuss ko yung formula, which is credit sales divided by 360 days multiply by average collection period. So, yung sa old mo na yon. And then, you will compare it with the new uh, average AR mo. So, same formula, pero iba naman yung kanyang uh, average collection period. You get their difference, so you will compute nun yung decrease in accounts receivable. And remember, if there is a decrease in accounts receivable, it means you collected faster. So, if you collected faster, you can deposit it in the bank and it can earn for you. So, you need to multiply that decrease in accounts receivable by a rate of return given by the problem. And then, you will get your total savings. Then, you compare those total savings to your um, expenses. Okay? What is that expense? Uh, credit sales multiplied by the percentage of customers taking the discount multiplied by the discount rate. Of course, kasi yun yung nakakabawas dun sa total earnings mo. So, deduct mo yun sa savings mo, you will arrive at the net advantage or disadvantage of changing the discount policy. So, this format is very useful. Um, how about credit relaxation policy? The formula is, of course, you have your benefit. Ano ba yung benefit kapag relax mo yung policy? Uh, the sales will increase. So, you multiply the percentage increase in sales by the credit sales multiply by the contribution margin rate. And then, you compare it with the cost. What are the costs that uh, are part of uh, relaxing your policy? First is, you have your collection cost, of course. Then, you have your bad debts. Hindi mawawala yan na merong mga hindi magbayad sa'yo kasi pinahaba mo yung period na magbabayad sila. That is the negative part. And number three, you have your opportunity cost. Now, how are we going to compute for your opportunity cost? You need to follow the format of our change in discount policy, yung diniscuss natin kanina. Then, you compare the benefit with the total cost, you will arrive at the savings or the loss. Now, in implementing a relaxation of policy, there are three factors or variable you need to consider. When the sales volume uh, increases because of the relaxation, it is a positive uh, on the part of the company. However, when it comes to investment in AR, it will also increase. Tataas, no? dadami yung receivables mo. And that is negative in the company kasi nakakulong yung pera mo sa receivables. And third, bad debts, it will increase. And it is negative on the company kasi pwedeng madaming hindi magbayad dun sa mga nag-avail ng iyong uh, collection uh, period or your uh, relaxation policy. Now, uh, let me end this presentation with a quotation uh, relating to our uh, receivables. According to Jinron, 
Only by giving are you able to receive more than you already have. So that's it guys. I hope you learned something from this video. And abangan nyo po yung ating pong susunod na video on the uh, application of our uh, topic in receivable management. For those who did not yet like this video, please um, click the subscribe button and hit the bell. Good day guys!